Today you're going to learn how to use the background eraser tool in Photoshop, how it differs from the magic eraser tool, and how you can use all of the eraser tools together to remove the backgrounds from your photos with ease. So let's get into it. Hello friend, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and to access the background eraser tool all you have to do is click and hold on the eraser tool in your toolbar and then you'll see the background eraser tool and the magic eraser tool. For now we're just going to talk about the background eraser tool and how it works. The background eraser tool is a way of removing the background destructively from your image. That means that when you go and paint over the background of a photo, Photoshop will delete those pixels from your layer. That means that you cannot get them back afterwards. Compared to a layer mask, this offers way less flexibility. However, it can be a little more beginner friendly. And if you for sure know you will never need those pixels again, it's not always a huge deal to just delete them altogether. Now, the way this tool works is by sampling colors in your background and then finding similar similar colors to delete as you paint over them. Now there's a few different important settings in the options bar that you need to be aware of before you go and use this tool. The first and most important settings are the sampling options. The first sampling option is called continuous and what this does is when your layer is selected, Notice how there's that little crosshair in the middle of my brush. That crosshair represents the color that is going to be sampled. In this particular background, there's a certain color of blue up here, a different blue here, and down here as well. So that means as I click and drag down, it's going to sample all those different changes in colors and erase them accordingly. This is really convenient when you have different colors in your background. Undoing that and going to our next sampling method called once, that means that the first place that you click is going to be the sampled color for the rest of the brush stroke. So in this case, I click and hold down here and I'll continue to drag. And as I go down like so, notice how it did not erase this darker blue. And that's because it has sampled this lighter blue here and this darker blue was outside of our tolerance range that we have set. If I undo this and then I set my tolerance to something lower, like 5% for example, and do the exact same brush stroke like this, Notice how Photoshop is a lot more picky about exactly which colors are being deleted. That's because it sampled that first initial color and then it was finding only that specific color as we drag down. So that's why there's some parts here that were not erased and then this lower area, which are completely different colors, were left untouched. So the tolerance setting along with your sample settings really help Photoshop to figure out what colors you want to delete. In a nutshell, if you want to be very specific with the colors, make sure to have a low tolerance. If you just want to erase a wide range of colors similar to the first area that you clicked and sampled, then you wanna just have a higher tolerance. If you're unsure, 30 to 50% typically does a really good job. So I'm gonna set this to 50% for my project here. Now for the third and final sampling mode, that is the background color. So that means the tool will go and erase the active background color in your photo. The way this is helpful is let's say I just wanna delete this darker strip of pixels right down here. If I hold alt or option, that'll bring up the eyedropper tool and I can click and hold to sample that darker color. Now if I press X on my keyboard, that will set that foreground sampled color to my background color. Now if I go and paint over those colors like so, you can see how it erases them completely. But if I go and try to paint over the lighter colors, it does not affect them at all. And that's because Photoshop is using that darker color to figure out which pixels to delete. And it deleted some other similar darker pixels because our tolerance is at a higher percentage. So now you start to see the importance and the usefulness of these different sampling options for different situations. When you have only a single colored background, say you have a studio portrait with like a gray or white background behind it, then you could just choose the once sample option because you only have one color behind your subject. However, in most cases, when you have multiple colors, as you see here, the continuous sampling option will do the best job. Now you might be thinking, well, what about going near edges? Because of course, with the continuous sample option, if I go and paint over here and my brush goes over top of an edge or the subject that I want to keep, it's now sampling that color from the edge and going to erase those pixels as well. So rather than having to be really careful about that kind of thing, we can go to our limit setting and set this to find edges. Now with the find edges setting enabled, Photoshop will delete anything that it believes is the background and leave anything that it believes to be the edge of a subject. So for example, I'll now go and paint over this like so, 
And even as I get close to my subject, it doesn't actually erase any of those pixels. It just samples the colors nearby and it doesn't actually erase that edge for me. So this is a really helpful way to make sure that all of your edges stay intact and you actually select the subject that you want. Now, as for these other limit settings, contiguous means that it will only delete pixels of similar colors that are actually touching. Meanwhile, the discontiguous setting will delete any pixels of the sampled color that are not touching. But in most cases, I just leave this to find edges because it gets most of the work done for me. So undoing all of that, let's go and delete this background using the background eraser tool. Now, one thing that's worth noting is I find that this tool is relatively slow when you have a large background to delete. So what you can do instead is just work around the edges of your subject and then use the eraser tool afterwards to delete all of the excess pixels that aren't near the edges and you don't need to be as careful about. So with my sample set to continuous, my limits to find edges and my tolerance to 50, I'm gonna make sure that my brush tolerance is set to off, not pen pressure, because that can change how things look a bit. And I'll make sure my spacing is set to 1% here. Just like the brush tool, you can change the size of your brush just by using the bracket keys. And this is helpful as you go along different edges. So I'm just gonna go and paint along the edge of my photo here going near the edge of the dog and the wood, trying to do my best to cut out the hair as well. So basically going near the hair, but not quite over it. And Photoshop does a pretty good job in this case because there was good contrast in color between the background and the hair, since the hair is like orange and then the background is blue. Now, when you go and brush over things, you need to make sure that the color that you want to remove is actually in the crosshairs of your brush. Otherwise it won't be erased. So now the majority of the pixels around the edge of my subject are erased and to just speed up the process of erasing all this excess area, I'm just gonna use my basic eraser tool because I don't need to be careful about going near any edges because we have that little bit of buffer area between our subject and the pixels that we want to delete. So I'll now choose the eraser tool here, make sure it's at 100% opacity, and I'll just go and use this to finish up the rest of my photo. Now our background has been successfully erased, but we need to double check a few things. And the best way to do that is by adding a background color to your image. By clicking on the layer effects, we can now go up to the solid color option and that will create a new color fill layer for us. I'll just set this to like a dark gray click OK, and now I'll drag it below my image layer. Immediately, you can start to see how this is a little bit less effective than other selection methods that I've talked about on this channel before. Because with selections, you can select an entire area and know that it's getting erased immediately. However, with this tool, it's easy to miss certain things since you're manually brushing over different parts of the image. But now with that background color in place, I can just go and touch up all these areas that don't look very good. And now for anything nearby the edges of my subject, I'll be going back to the background array tool and I'll keep my settings to the same as before. Now I just need to go and paint over all of that excess area, making sure to sample those colors. It might take a little bit of time here, but you just got to make sure that the crosshair goes over the color that you want to erase. Again, that crosshair is in the center of your brush, so it can take a little bit of precise movements with your mouse or your editing tablet to make sure that it all works out properly. Now that I finished erasing the background, you can start to see how this tool really shines when there's actually a defined background color and an in-focus sharp-edged subject. When you're dealing with edges around fur or hair or anything with multiple colors in the background, sometimes this tool is a little bit more work than it's worth and instead you should be using one of the selection methods that I talk about in this video right here. However, when you have a background that's just a couple of colors or even better a single color, this tool really shines and allows you to just erase the pixels that you don't need. With all that said, there are situations situations when you will accidentally delete something that you wanted to keep. And since we have deleted those pixels, that means that they are gone permanently. So how can we go about getting them back? In this case, I erased part of the dog here that I would like to add back into my image. And the best way to do that is by using the history brush. So going to my history brush tool, what this allows you to do is paint over an area to basically undo the history of that specific spot. So scaling up my brush with a 100% flow and opacity, I could just go and paint over this part of the dog. And what that tool does for us is it undoes the deleted pixels and adds them back in because it's just going back to a previous history state and then adding in those specific pixels. So this is a really helpful tool to know about as you're working with the background eraser tool. You can go over any edges you need and it just helps to reconstruct anything that might have accidentally got deleted in the process. Now earlier in this video I mentioned the magic eraser tool and how that might be different from the background
background eraser tool. In the most basic sense, the background eraser tool allows you to have more control over what is being erased because you can choose the different sample options, you can brush over exactly what you want to be deleted, and it's a lot easier to erase around specific edges without Photoshop doing more of the work for you. Likewise, when there's multiple colors in a background, the background eraser tool often does a much better job. To highlight what I mean here, I've added in the same image, but now without all of the pixels erased. This time we're going to remove the background using the magic eraser tool. This tool works very similarly to the magic wand tool in the sense that it samples a color and then deletes it, except with the magic wand tool it creates a selection instead. So this just kind of speeds up the process a bit. Wherever you click is going to be the color that the tool samples, and then it will go and find other colors in the photo to delete. You often have to click around a couple of times to delete different areas, but as you can see, it does a really good job to quickly erase all of the background when it is of similar color. However, it doesn't do a very good job around fine edges such as fur versus with our background eraser tool, we had a little bit more of a realistic looking edge compared to the magic eraser tool. So if you have clear defined edges, the magic eraser tool might be a better option to use. However, if you have more detailed edges against a simple background, then the background eraser tool is going to be a better option for you. Now, I wouldn't suggest that any of the eraser tools should be your go-to options for background removals because by deleting those pixels permanently, you don't have as many options to refine your selection and especially deal with complicated edges to get a realistic looking cutout. Instead, these tools should only be used when you want quick and easy cutouts without having to deal with any selections or layer masks. However, if you're wanting to learn more about creating selections that look super realistic in Photoshop, make sure to check out this video right here where I share all of the best beginner-friendly ways to cut out your images even with complicated edges.